Hi, in this video we're just going to do the introduction of modelling uh, friction. So, the important things to uh, remember is that friction always opposes the motion. So here I have a block on a rough, and rough means it, there's friction, slope, inclined it, theta uh, to the horizontal at the moment, theta is set to zero. And we have this thing idea which is known as a coefficient of friction. Now, normally it's normally like told to be between zero and one, but that's actually a, a bit of a misconception because it can actually be higher than one. For example, sandpaper on sandpaper has roughly a coefficient maybe of about two. Okay, and so what you've got to remember is that friction opposes the motion of direction. It's not dependent on the speed of the two objects being put together. And the the magnitude of the frictional force, which is the red one here on the diagram, depends on the normal reaction of the block with the surface times its coefficient of friction. So hence we get F is equal to mu being the coefficient of friction times R being the normal reaction force. Now problems normally involve you like finding uh, a tension given a weight, for example. Now the things to remember, let's have a look at it. If I change mu to mu to a lower number, you see that obviously it's going to be different than the size of the uh, reaction. And obviously when the uh, mu is zero, there's actually no friction. Then we talk about a smooth surface in mechanics. Okay, so to put it back to one. Now, if we change the angle, then we get uh, components. Let's make it 30 for, for the moment. And this um, GeoGebra app I will attach to the uh, notes in the video. So if we change now the f f coefficient of friction, okay, it will depend on what it uh, is. So if I said about 0.4, then that will be the frictional force. Okay, so it's proportional to the normal reaction and the coefficient is the thing linking the two together. Obviously, we're going to have components if for the weight, because the, that will be the weight acting in the same direction as the uh, friction. We need to consider that one mg uh, sine theta. This angle here is always the same as this angle here. And this weight here, the vertical one, is going to be um, mg cos theta. So uh, a typical question could be, what would be the force needed to move so that the block just starts to move? And that would get the idea of what's known as limiting friction up the slope. So if we um, click here, we can get the resolve forces. So we've got here, so what resolving this way, we have T, the tension acting in that direction, we have the mg sine theta acting against it, so that's why we subtract it, Ma is minus mu r, and because we're uh, discussing at the point of movement, we're going to put that equal to zero, okay, and then if we want to resolve the uh, forces in the j direction, then that's obviously perpendicular to the slope, then we're going to have r minus this component here, mg cos theta, so given the weight, and a coefficient of friction. So given the weight, you can calculate R, then you've got I, then you can calculate that one, and then you can calculate um, T newtons, in, which you can see in the later video. Okay, so I hope this has given you a little bit of understanding. Okay. Um, when sliding does occur, then we're going to have uh, minus mu, uh, F is equal to M is equal to mu R. Okay, and you can look up, um, you can always look on the internet for different coefficients of friction. Um, but it is actually a misconception that uh, a coefficient of friction is actually between 0 and 1. I hope you've understood, and I thank you very much for watching.